to you all viewers of Equinox Television. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the news. Twelve days already since journalist Martin Sogo was kidnapped, brutally killed, and his corpse abandoned, thrown away on the outskirts of Yaoundé, precisely in Nebogo. Twelve days after President Probia, President Probia of the Republic, pays special homage to journalist Martin Sogo and to the media family in Cameroon. In a press release signs today, President Probia says several persons have already been, been intercepted or arrested in connection with the kidnap and killing of Martinez Zogo. That is our major story. Welcome back, viewers. We just told you in the headlines that President Probia has assured the national and international communities that some of the persons who are, uh, who are connected to the killing, kidnap and killing of Martin Nasogo have already been arrested and are now being questioned. President Probia in the press release signed by, um, the, uh, by uh, Ferdinand Ngongo today also paid condolences to the bereaved family, biological family of Martin Nasogo and also the media family in Cameroon. I read the press release as it was signed today by Ferdinand Gongo. The Minister of State, Secretary General of the Presidency of the Republic, hereby informs the public that in uh, pursuance of uh, the instructions of the President of the Republic, His Excellency President Pro Bia, a mixed gendarmerie police commission of inquiry has uh, been set up to shed light on the assassination of the journalist Asen Salomon Bami Zogo, also known as Martinez Zogum. Investigations carried out so far have led to the arrest of several individuals highly suspected of being involved in this heinous crime. Others uh, remain wanted. Ongoing interrogations and uh, ensuing judicial proceedings will help to determine the level of involvement of, the, of each suspect and establish the identities of all those connected in one way or the other with the assassination of Martinez Zogum. In this tragic circumstance, the head of state, President Probia, wishes to pay a special tribute to the late journalist Martinez Zogo and restate his support uh, to the profession as a whole. Once again, he extends to the family of the deceased his heartfelt, um, his heartfelt uh, condolences and assures them of the sympathy of the entire nation. The President of the Republic reaffirms his resolve to keep up his struggle for democracy, human rights, good governance and progress together with the government, of, uh, the government and all Cameroonians of goodwill. That press release was signed this evening by, the, by Ferdinand Gongo, Minister of State, Secretary General at the Presidency of the Republic. And now the national and international community has continued clamoring for justice to be done for Martin Nelsogo and for his culprit to be identified and brought to book. In London uh, today, Cameroonians are dressed in black and also red attire say they want justice for Martin Nelsogo and they want all his culprits to be identified and brought to justice. Let's now have more with Immaculate Fogui. Coffin. Decorated with a Cameroonian flag and a picture of killed journalist Martinet Zogo displayed in front of the Cameron High Commission in London. The site has been taken hostage by all 10 Cameroonian activists who are demanding justice for journalist Martinet Zogo, who was brutally killed by yet to be identified individuals. The activist from the anti Isatuna Brigade carried out scenes depicting that of a state funeral. The activist painted their clothes and the walls of the Cameron High Commission with red paint. They equally had themselves chained to the gate of the structure while maintaining that they are fighting for justice 
to be served. The head of state recently demanded that an inquiry commission be created in order to shed more light on how the perpetrators arrested. And we'll be coming back detailedly to the communique um, from the presidency of the Rep republic in our subsequent news editions. And now two people suspected to have kidnapped two kids at the Nkomitak neighborhood in the Dwala 2 area have been apprehended. The two men were picked up in the Dwala 2 neighborhood after the two kids got missing on Wednesday and were found in the house by neighbors. Let's now have more with Manji and Gabriel. Another crowd pulling scenario at Nkolmitak neighborhood in the Dwala 2 subdivision, littoral region of Cameroon. The inhabitants of this neighborhood were furious after two kids got missing in the neighborhood since Wednesday. A search for them on the same day proved futile as no traces of them were found. It was only this Thursday that they were finally discovered at a story building which happened to be owned by a neighbor. My name is Jared the mother of twins. On Wednesday, we were together with the kids, but later we didn't see them. Then we started a search for the kids and asked even our neighbors who said they have not seen them. This morning, we were surprised to discover that it was in the house of the same neighbors who denied knowing the whereabouts of the kids that the kids were hidden. So it'd be very surprising. The joint effort of the police force and the Nkululun Gendarmerie Brigade enabled them to arrest two suspects. The kids who were already rushed to the hospital at the time of this operation were in good health. The children are doing well health-wise. They not get no wound, they not get no nothing. They are fine. I told the parents to ask the guards well because he should be aware of everything that goes on around this house. The children who were inside the house I heard were unable to talk apart from the little girl who called to his father saying she wanted to drink water. Where they begin the stamp for inside, begin the stamp for inside, so no one they talk. Now that gay one shout, say, oh, papa, papa, I want drink water. Now what I went broke the house now, so he matched the house with force, broke up. The suspects are now helping security forces to shed more light on the reason why these kids were kidnapped before justice will take its course. <laughs> And now, since February 1, 2023, the price of fuel increased across the national territory by 100 francs CFA. A reporter, Lucille Yengu, a CMA, is stopped over at some street corners and markets here in the economic capital, Douala, where traders say the price hike would definitely affect other sectors negatively. With the recent hike in the price of fuel, sellers of foodstuff at in the Koti market, Dwala 3 subdivision say they are disappointed. They complain the upsurge is negatively affecting the cost of transportation, thus affecting sales. The petrol up, rise up, everything becomes very difficult. It's not easy and things are not moving the way we are expecting. A pocket, you know, three, five, seven thousand, five thousand. So things are very difficult. Well, at the first time, the pocket of this was at least 2,015. When you look at this, 7,000 francs. How can the family live with this? It's very difficult. In same vein, those who buy foodstuffs from rural areas to urban areas say it's now difficult to transport the goods. Ezeka, well, the Ezeka, Babimbi, all oh, that's Basar site. So to carry it there, to bring it there, it's not very easy. It makes things up because the transportation is... It's the syndicate problem, the transportation, because the petrol is too expensive. So those who are going to the bush to transport it, there is not easy for them to come and to sell it at the easy price. Ndowo, a seller of yams, also says she has been unable to sell. 50 cages now, it was 13,500, but today it's 20,000, 21,000. So when we put it, 5,000. It's very expensive for those who are going to eat at the house. To so pass all the whole day at the market, we don't sell it anything because it's very expensive. Bike riders decry the increase in the price of fuel. They say it is hampering their business. If you are in Bonaberry, I want to carry a customer. Because of the price of the petrol, we can increase the, 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 the price of the, the transport fare too because 
when I burn the coat is 500 because of the, the pitch go, we increase the price to 600. You see that if we increase the price, no, the customers too, it's not all the customers that will pay. And you cannot lose a customer ball because of 100 francs. So you have to be forced to carry the, the customer. To add, they are left with no choice than to increase the cost of transportation. Decide to add the transport fare because uh, now the chonang is very, very scarce, even to see it in the, even in the station. So if you, if you go to a place that you, you see a petrol there, you pump even your 2,000, you cannot carry a, a customer with a distance of 100 francs. You look for a distance that can pay you at least 500, 700, so that you meet up with your, with your expensive. We also, the bike riders, automatically, we are also commercial. So we have to increase our price. So we have to take from, from the top. Inhabitants of the city of Douala say they fear the worst if the prices of basic commodities continue to rise. And now in the Mongol division of the littoral region, the local populations uh, are already complaining about the negative effects of the price hike of petroleum products, especially a few students are now forced to trek to school because the bike riders have already increased transportation fare. And some feeding stations are not respecting the homologated price of 730 francs CFA they sell in the Mongol division division at 700 and at 42 francs CFA. Smart you can give a complete story for us. Since February 1, 2023, fuel prices in Cameroon witnessed an increase of at least 100 francs CFA. The increase of fuel prices in Loom of the Mongo division has caused more harm particularly to students. Since Wednesday, there have been an increase in the level of lateness for students heading to school. In the morning when students get up, they don't have access to bike. And so some bikes are even packed up because they say the price of, of petrol have increased. So that's why you see a, a, a crowd of students like this outside. And that's one of the reasons of this late coming. This is so because the increase in fuel prices has led to an automatic addition of some France CFA to the initial 100 francs the students used to pay to go to school. We were paying 100 to 200, but now we pay 250, 300. At times they even say 500 when you are two of you. Somebody like me, I live from far to pay my transport was at first 100, but now it has increased for 200, so go and come is 200. And my money, my, my, my daily meal is 500. So when I pay 400, I just have 100. Now I don't have enough money to eat again. Even doubling students on a single bike has also witnessed an additional charge from what they used to pay. The students are not the only ones touched by the increase in fuel price in Loom. Even commercial motorcycle riders are lamenting. The level of the price of the petrol that they have increased to us is not good. We are very angry because the, the, the work are not going. The prices of the, 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 the mimbo that we are drinking is better to increase than, to, than for the petrol to increase. Because some of us are making transportation. That's our only way of living. We don't have so many things that we can live on. We live on bike. So when they are increasing the price of petrol, we are very angry. The commercial bike riders say the increase will also affect what they drop at home on daily basis for food. We cannot meet up for our responsibility that we have in our various home, in our very home. And we have children that are going to school. We use the, the bike to work, to sponsor them. And we have run for and the phone crisis come to Loom to work and we, we cannot see no effort. Things are going more stronger, things are going more harder. So we are begging the government that let, let him uh, uh, reduce the price of the petrol. Even though government communicated that a liter of fuel is 730 francs CFA, in Loom, some fuel stations are selling at 742 francs CFA, something worth investigating by the officials of the Delegation of Trade in the Mongo Division. And now after several petitions, the minimum wage of Cameroon was increased from 36 to 41,000 francs CFA. And economists earlier said the amount 
might not be respected if the government does not have talks with um, workers, trade unions, before increasing the minimum wage in Cameroon, a proposal which was never taken into consideration before the decision was taken by the government. Let's now come back to the report of Lucy Liengu Asia before the augmentation of the minimum wage in Cameroon from 36 to 41,000 francs CFA. Despite the hike in the prices of basic commodities and increase in the standards of living, workers' salaries have remained the same with a minimum wage rate of 36,270 francs CFE. Two years ago, on the International Labor Day, the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Gegra Owona, announced that discussions to increase the minimum wage rate were underway. Since then, Cameroonians have been waiting in vain. An economist, Edmond Kwate, says there are some constraints. If you consider the structure of the budget of Cameroon today, which is like the, the budget of Cameroon is at 6,000 uh, billion, 6,300 billion CFA. If you take uh, like two lines, if you take the salary of the personnel and if you take the, I mean, the, the debt service, internal and external debt service, you have already 3,000. Those, only those two lines are already 3,000 uh, billion is too much. So today, Cameroon cannot afford to increase the salary simply because, I mean, if you consider the structure of the budget, Cameroon, the budget will not be able to support, to stand this, uh, uh, the, the, the increase of the salary. Another economist, Dr. Iu Kunchi, thinks the minimum wage of a Cameroonian cannot be increased without the consent of syndicates and GCAM. An increase in the minimum wage uh, should be a consensus. In Cameroon, it is a consensus. In other words, it's an initiative by the government, but in consultation with uh, the civil society, syndicate, and also uh, the GICAM, uh, the organization representing the corporate private sector. So it's a consensus. It's not just a decision from the government. Because the SMIC impact mostly the employee of the private sector. You know, the government can decide unilaterally to increase the salary of the employee of the public sector. But as far as the employee of the private sector are concerned, uh, according to our regulation, there should be a consensus, meaning the government should discuss with the syndicate, civil society, and also with uh, the SHCAM, which will represent the corporate private sector, and agree on an amount together. The situation, according to some Cameroonians, is becoming unbearable as they find it difficult to manage their resources. What then can be done? Economists propose possible solutions. If you look in Cameroon, for example, a lot of product perish in form because of poor road condition. A lot of product perish in fridge because of lack of electricity. So in the longer term, an effective way to fight inflation in Cameroon should be to build more road, should be to uh, you know, build more you know, hydropower infrastructure to produce more electricity so that you will have more product uh, leaving farm to the market. Fewer product will perish in farm because of poor condition conditions. Before 2008, the minimum wage rate in Cameroon was at 28,000 francs, but after a coalition of 12 central labor unions, it was increased to 36,270 francs CFE which till date has not been changed. Cameroonians therefore hope for the government to raise the minimum wage rate so as to help the population manage inflation. And now, a home for the less privileged which has been built at Makepe, precisely at Ancien Discharge, is facing threats of demolition from the Douala City Council in favor of a government school in that area and the brain behind that orphanage who is barrister Kamwa Limen sought the court and a calls on the city mayor of the Douala City Council to derail from being manipulated. Let's now have more on that with uh, Innocent Aze. Such a property like this 
without listening to me. The right to fair hearing is a fundamental human right, and you violate it even international court our system. The bring behind this happy case of an age, Barisan Kamwali men denies to be dribbled, treated, and treated with injustice by authorities of this government's nursery primary school, Makepe and Saint Decharge, allegedly backed up by the Dwala City Council over this portion of land belonging to him. I am the owner of uh, Block 23 of Land Certificate 41061, obtained in 2008 to 2009 thereof. And we have a cadastral plan that was validated by the uh, Dwala Urban Council in 2012. In that cadastral plan, this school is built on an 8 meter road. So there's 8 meters here that they have, the school has to destroy, they have to destroy the school to permit this. Now, the school, in doing what they were doing, they encroached 580 square meters of my land. This is my land. And I tried to do everything reasonable to make them understand. They will not understand. I went to court. I won the case. As a result, the school fence constructed on the encroached land was destroyed by a court decision. But there is still a problem. That I've canalized the water and passed inside my land. It is not done. And this was done in complicity with some people at the level of the Duala Urban Council who gave the project and they defrauded the state by doing a bad job. I've written to the, the mayor of the Duala town that they should see into it that this road passes because if the road does not pass, how do they evacuate the water? And so when they go and complain that I am the cause why water does not circulate, they, they, it is not true. I have the right to enjoy my land. It is my fundamental right. Baristan Kamwa suspects a foul play to snatch and switch his land to the school. There is a further problem because this school was created. They gave the authorization without providing land. And so they came and chased people from here to take the, that, that land. And then they violated the, the urban plan of the area. And so today, they are doing everything to demolish an orphanage that has spent about 60 million funds to build to accommodate street children, to accommodate orphans. According to him, this is the reason why the main access way into the happy case orphanage was sealed in total illegality. And the super the, the, the mayor of Dwala town should know that they're being, he's being, he's being de deceived. They came and sealed that property without ever summoning me. When I look at the document, it's just a, a piece of rubbish. A legal nonsense. The document in itself gives certain conditions. They say that on this document, you need to precise the offense that you are sealing the property for. And when you took note of the offense, they could not feel the offense of which they sealed me. They could not feel when, if they have given, the day they gave me, my name is wrongly spelled. And what of it all is that he signed by one Mr. Kana Francis with, with his name stamp without the stamp of the of the Duala uh, Urban Council. Confident justice will never dash into the dark in favor of those who abuse power and the law. The legal mind and proprietor of this private property calls on the Duala City Mayor to respect the rights of fair hearing. That is, listen to both parties, followed by verification, so as not to take a biased decision. And some legal minds or lawyers say it is commonplace in Cameroon, especially in the city of Douala, to see people unlawfully evicted from their property. Let's now listen to some of them in this except. And I was working fully here because one time in 2020, Barista Lehman told me that he has taken an oath to build up uh, an orphanage. Last year, he called me when the project has already gone, come now and be steady and follow up everything. And it is moving. But with the obstruction that is going wrong around, I don't know if these people don't want people, children without parents, to enjoy. Because they, all those who are doing this do everything for their own children to, to live well. Then what? They do not even think about other children that do not have parents. We just pray God that everybody will come to his senses. You see that Barista Lehman has put up structure, this structure, to reflect a futuristic orphan. Because the orphans that are going to live here, they will never feel as if they are orphans. It's coming into place and there are some hurdles. I must say that whoever is behind to frustrate this project should know that he is dealing with lawyers. And we are ready to put all the energy to ensure that justice is realized. I don't see why some people who think that they don't, they will not respect the law should come in to frustrate this project. But we are sending a message that they should know that we are ready for them and we will make them to respect the law by all possible means. The authorities are misinformed, probably because they're acting under some influence, interest, but they should, again, take a proper 
look into the entire affair and then they will discover that Barrister Lehman is on the right. Uh, initiators of, of projects like this will not be applauded by uh, members of the community. Instead, they're trying to pull it down. But I know we stand Cameroon is a state of law and everything will eventually fall in place. And now we talk something else. Female gendarmes who are in Cameroon and who are also part of the UN Women are strengthening the capacity of gendarme officers and the national gendarmerie as a whole in the fight against gender-based violence. The organization has set, set up gender decks in six gendarmerie regions in Douala recently in Bunaberry. Babila Jonathan trusts us more. So Cameroon is confronted a crisis complex. The commander of the second gendarmerie region, General Ekongwese Divine, points out the complex security challenges faced by Cameroon in different parts of the country, constituting a gender-based violence enabling factor. The Boko Haram conflict in the Lake Chad Basin affecting the far north region, the influx of Central African refugees into the East and the Damawa regions, and the cessation crisis in the northwest and southwest regions have all created favorable environments for violence, particularly against women and girls. Qui contribue à accroître le nombre de victimes de violences basées sur le genre. Within the framework of its efforts to end violence, restore peace, and ensure the respect of human rights, la Gendarmerie nationale a signé avec ONU Femmes. UN Women signed an agreement with the National Gendarmerie in view of stepping up the capacity of forces of law and order in the fight against right violations, thus the installation of the Bonaberry Gendarmerie Command, gender decks, and handing over of necessary equipment for the fight against gender-based violence in the littoral Gendarmerie Légion and the second Gendarmerie region. Speaking at the second Gendarmerie region headquarters in Douala, UN Women Focal Point in the Secretariat of State for Defense of the National Gendarmerie, Lieutenant Colonel Abomo, emphasized that the Bonaberry Command was selected because it receives a high number of internally displaced persons from the Northwest and Southwest regions. The majority of them being women and girls, their vulnerability exposes them to gender-based violence. Le bureau est ouvert à tous les survivants, hommes, femmes et enfants. The gender dex is open to all survivors who will receive moral and legal support from the officers in charge. Nous encourageons pour cela les, la dénonciation. J'exhorte donc pour ce faire. General Ekongwese has urged all the officers assigned to the gender decks to make good use of beds and other equipment to assist gender-based violence survivors. And now the European Union has adopted a new approach to development with the introduction of the Global Gateway and Global Europe. The approach was presented to one of its development partners, which is the Douala Seaport. For me, I'm from Sander, completes the story for us. Within just two decades, the mixed fruit terminal of the Douala Seaport has witnessed a tremendous transformation from an archaic and obsolete platform this strategic sector of the Douala Seaport has been modernized to an acceptable international standard, a realization which stands as one of the concrete results of the European Union Douala Seaport partnership and its new orientation. Because this is a project where you have a public component bringing in private capital and we are deeply convinced that to reach the sustainable development goals and to be able to bridge the infrastructure gap around the world, public capital will never be enough and we have to join forces with the private sector. And this also justifies my presence in Douala knowing how vibrant the private sector is in this, in this city. To assess its achievements and present Global Gateway, the approach through which the European Union will henceforth relate with its development partners Madame Miriam Ferran, Deputy Director General at the Directorate General of International Partnerships of the European Union Commission, visited the Douala Seaport. 
Global Europe, it's the new financial instrument of the European Union. And to do this, we have selected a limited number of priorities, so we want to focus our assistance on the key, most important and transformational challenges. And uh, we do, so to do this, <coughs> we also bring with us all the power of the European Union as a whole. So we don't work only the European institutions on the one hand and the 27 member states on the other. A visit during which she presented the new changes brought forth by the new approach. What changes is the way we aim at implementing our, our support strategy in real partnerships with all our partners and the partners can be regions, governments or local authorities. So the first element is that we define common objectives and we agree on the kind of project or support that the European Union is delivering and we do this so as to maximize the impact on the local population. Replacing the European Union Fund for Development, the European Union Development Partners will henceforth have to adjust to the approach and orientation of global Europe. The new orientation that saw the modernization of the mixed fruit terminal of the Douala Seaport. And viewers, that was what we put together for you this evening on the news at 6 p.m. We thank you always for being there. Don't square away as usual. Equinox War comes up at exactly 7 p.m. That would be in less than 25 minutes with Serge Alain Wittu and Julien Best beside will be with you at 8 p.m. for the news in the French language. There at 8 p.m. we'll be coming to the details of President Probia's press release through um, Ferdinand Gongo paying special homage to Matt Nelsogo. We'll be coming back to them details as would be at 8 p.m. Stay with us on Equinox Television. Bye bye for now. Equinox Télévision, au-delà de l'image, nous rendons compte. If you suspect you may have a coronavirus infection, please call your healthcare provider in advance.